Hi, Dave. Hi. This is Dave. Welcome back. Meese Rosebud Fly and Tackle in Billings, Montana. And we're going to continue our series today discussing different fly tying materials. <laughs> the subject for today is deer hair. Last time we talked about elk hair. I'm not going to rehash that, but I think it's important for comparison purposes to again look at the elk. Now remember, there's only one species of elk and typically they're harvested in the winter time. So they're gonna have a good amount of underfur. Cow elk is much darker than bull and fairly short hairs compared to bull hair. Cow elk is a great spinning hair. It's a little more durable than deer hair, but deer hair has some nice properties as well. Bull elk, as you can see, is much longer fibers much lighter in color. It's a little more brittle than cow. It doesn't spin quite as well. It's not my choice for spinning hair, although it flares well. And then we have yearling elk, which is very, very fine, dark colored, nice long fibers on it. It's an excellent all-purpose hair. It spins well, flares well, and it's very dark. Now, the problem with deer is that there are three different species and there are different seasons and that they're hunted. Now, don't let this confuse you. There are some things that you need to keep in mind anytime you select deer hair. First of all is the environment. Whitetail were indigenous to this country. They're everywhere from the southeast to the northwest. And um, what we don't uh, remember here in the West is that in the Southeast, they can be hunted during various seasons. So we can get winter killed deer, white-tailed deer. We can also get summer killed white-tailed deer. So the environment has a lot to do with the coloring of the hair. White-tailed deer are forest and edge animals. So typically they're dark colored to blend in with their habitat. Elk are originally plains animals. So they're lightly colored uh, to blend in with the light dry grasses of the summertime. The amount of under fur in any piece of fur depends on the season it was harvested. A winter killed animal is always going to have more under fur than a summer killed animal. So you can typically look at fur and tell by the under fur what season it was killed in. Now the belly hair on deer is very, very white and we'll get into that a little bit later. It has different properties than uh, the flank hair or back hair that you buy. Now mule deer hair, of course mule deer are just indigenous to the west. It's the only place they're found and hunted. You can see mule deer is typically a little bit lighter in color than white-tailed deer. Again, this is a winter killed animal, so you have a decent amount of underfur on it. But the colors, the tips are, are strongly a model, just like the white tail, but the color is just a little bit lighter than white tail. So depending on your intentions, what you're trying to tie, then this, this can be a decision point for you. The belly hair on, on mule deer are typically cream colored. You don't see much of that around because white tail is so common and so abundant and it's easier to dye. There is one other species of deer. It's a subspecies of mule deer and it's the, uh, the coastal deer hair. Sometimes you'll see it marked as coastal deer hair. Other times it'll be marked like ex caddis hair. The difference is it's dark because again, these are forest creatures like whitetail, but they don't live in a cold environment. So typically you don't see near as much under fur on them. See this package is ex caddis hair or comparadon hair because it's excellent for winging materials for those types of flies. It's very dense and fine and has very good colored tips. So let us, and additionally, again, I mentioned that sometimes you're going to get deer hair that's also short, and very fine, and doesn't have a lot of under fur. This sometimes is called ex caddis hair. This is actually summer killed whitetail. It's fine. It doesn't have as much under fur as a winter, as a winter killed deer. And uh, the coloration is typically a little bit lighter. But uh, you can tell just by looking at the patch, the amount of under fur and the color where that game animal lived and thus what kind of properties that piece of fur is going to have. Now I talked about this in the elk hair 
um, section and we'll go over this again because we get a lot of questions on what kind of hair can I use for spinning, what kind of hair is better for wings and things like that. What I use is called what I call the pinch test. You can determine how hollow deer hair is simply by getting it near the bottom, pinching it hard with your fingernail. If it retains that indentation, then it'll be good spinning hair. Now hair is all constructed the same way. If you imagine a soda straw, then you fill it full of polystyrene beads. That's the kind of plastic styrofoam cups are made out of or beanbag chairs. Those are the individual cells within that hair straw. The heavier the outside of the straw construction is, the more densely packed those cells are and the heavier their cell walls are, the more dense that hair is going to be and the less susceptible it will be for spinning. So for example, bull elk hair, larger in diameter, harder, if you pinch it near the tips, it doesn't retain any of that pinch. So this hair is not going to flare well. But you take a hollow hair like mule deer or white-tailed deer, cow elk, or even yearling elk, and those, those the cell walls are thinner, the diameter of that actual straw, the hair itself is thinner, so it's more easily compressed and it spins better, okay? Now you'll find deer hair, deer body hair, deer spinning hair, it just depends on the actual uh, product producer. For example, here is spinning deer hair. It's the same as body hair, natural body hair, it's the same as all-purpose hair. All of it will spin very well and it can be used for a variety of purposes. You can use it for winging material as well. You just have to be careful how much pressure you put on it. There are other deer or other hairs that spin very well. Caribou and reindeer are difficult to get, but caribou and reindeer, reindeer are both very, very hollow hairs because, again, of the environment they live in. Very, very cold latitudes, so they have to have that hollow hair for insulation and a lot of underfur. We do keep those patches um, in stock. It's not a common product, but it is available. So we've looked at body hair, spinning hair, natural hair, it's all the same stuff. So let's look at a couple different parts of the, of the deer itself besides the flank and the back hair. For example, let's look at belly hair. Can get it out of the package. Belly hair is longer than the body hair. It's more brittle than the body hair. It does not spin well because it's a hard hair, unlike a hollow hair. However, the body hair is white on a white tail, which is what most of this um, uh, belly hair, excuse me, is. And it's very easy to dye in a multitude of colors. Darker furs, like the mule deer, white tail, elk, etc., are easier to dye in darker colors, but to dye them in lighter colors, they have to be bleached first and then dyed, and you can only bleach it so white. And the more bleaching and the more dyeing you do, the harder it is on the hair and the better chances are you're gonna ruin a batch. So belly hair is good for winging. It's good for streamers, things like that. Like I say, there's a, a huge amount of different colors that are available. I don't recommend this for spinning hair. It can be spun, but it takes a lot of pressure and the hairs themselves are brittle and they break very easily. So your fly won't last very long. And just like with the elk, with the elk hair section, we, we discussed hawk hair. Hawk hair comes from the lower, the lower leg of the animal, whether it's elk or deer. It's very, very fine. Usually it doesn't have much color on the tips, unlike the body hair. And it's also good for winging materials on small flies if you want tips that don't have any color. There, there's virtually no underfur on it, and again, the hair is super, super fine. So it does have some applications in fly time. And then we'll go back over just quickly. Because of the different deer and the different parts of the deer they're taken from, the ex caddis hair is again named for the fly itself. Craig Matthews developed the ex caddis, and the hair is perfect for tying that pattern. 
the Comparadon. It was developed by a Nazi and um, trying to think of the other guy. Anyway, the Comparadon pattern was developed, and again, what you want is you want fine hair with even tips, not much under fur. So this is typically, this is a summer-killed white-tailed deer. Then lastly, we have bucktail. The bucktail is always taken from the white-tailed deer simply because the edges are so white. Mule deer have a smaller tail. They don't have much of a white area on them. This is a dyed bucktail. They'll always have brown in the center and the edges will always be white. Now the hair varies from the base of the tail to the tip. It varies in length and it varies in construction. The hair by the very base of the tail is long. It's large in diameter. As you progress up the tail towards the tip, the hair gets finer and finer in diameter until you get near the tips, which is extremely fine. So depending on the properties you're looking for, you can use this for tailing materials like we have on the gurgler here in the shop. You can use it for wing materials. But just know that typically the base hair at the very base of the tail is really not very usable. You can see there's a huge variety in the lengths of the tips. It requires a lot of, of uh, bucktail to finally get a length that's even enough for your purposes. As you get towards the tip of the tail, the hair is much more even and it's much easier to use. All right, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks for watching.